from yes. your clinic visit and head into our fifth map and final map of this series. We're going to Dragon Shire. I, mean, I really did not expect us to go all the way to a full series from the very beginning match of HGC Korea tonight. And look at all that. We're going into the fifth map. Dragon Shire actually in red looks scary in a way. Dragon looks like he's out for blood. We got that buff a few patches ago, and he's ready to do work. Oh yeah, a little more damage. Yeah. Well, it's going to be an exciting one. In terms of rotational play, though, I think this is a great map for Gluck, to be honest. And I'm surprised that Feliz picked it. I feel like Tomb of the Spider Queen suits their playstyle a lot more. It's a more team-oriented, pick-oriented map. Um, Team-fight-oriented, excuse me, and pick-oriented map. Mm -hmm. This map is about controlling the altars using the camps to control rotations and i feel like that's something that gluck has been doing way better in really all four games the last game they lost because of positioning mistakes from relic and you can see by his face he knew it so meridian band coming out first time we're gonna have that their feedback should have i don't think it was I don't. Th okay, OJ did make some crazy plays by Dwarf tossing into Q's Q, but he missed a lot of Q's actually. I think Arthas was actually the biggest problem that they had. Maybe Arthas second bin, second ban could have been better, but maybe they're just tossing that aside, trying to pick the best one like Hanzo or even. Well, so Genji's gonna make it into this game, but this has been a 100% pick rate this season for OJ on the Meridian. So I think it's a as a ban on perhaps a comfort pick for him. It's the only hero that's been picked all four games as well for Feliz. So, say OJ, we've, he's been a good Meridian for a long time. Looking back at Korea Open Division as plays we've seen from him back then. He's always been the main tank player. Minus a few uh, times where he did play DPS. He's mostly been the tank player. And Meridian's his best hero. Four for four times he picked it. He will not be picking it the fifth time. So some respect, I think, in this ban. Coming out for Gluck. At least this time they're thinking a lot. Yes, Grey main definitely take it away, and also you need that power. Seems like they are just having that solution. Think taking away Uther when they have when the other team takes Genji. Uh, I think it's okay. I think it's a lot better with Grey main this time than Hanzo before. Yeah, completely agree with you on that. Bit of a weird pick earlier. Um, to have it with the Hanzo. So, Gluck now has the opportunity to pick the Hanzo the, if they want. The brothers. They'd have the brothers on the team, but... Genji gives you a lot of dive. Hanzo can give you those finishing blows or can weaken heroes for the dive for yes. Genji to come in and get those kills with the Dragon Bleed. But I think it's safer to hold out on that second DPS like we were talking about in Game 4 and draft into a strong solo laner here. Because um, that's so important for Dragonshire. Like grab Sonya or grab Dahaka here, whichever you prefer for your comp, I think is the better way to play this. And also uh, grabbing uh, a Lucia or even a Stukov. Okay, so they grab the Sonya. Because now they can ban Dahaka. And Malthel, maybe Malthel wins the matchup against Sonya, but Tyriel's already banned, so Malthel's not as strong. So you can ban the Dahaka here as Gluck. You've already won the solo lane, mm. essentially, um, in terms of rotational play. I think that's the best way to approach this now. Let's see what else they are hold, hiding in their sleeves. I think Feliz really need to catch them in the global because they will be not, if not losing, they will be just pairing up with uh, with Sonya on the other side. And top lane, if you lose that control, basically you may just end up giving up the Dragon Knight very easily. On yeah, this or you will lose the neutral camp in the bot lane while you're losing that top lane because you have to rotate away or, or you have to rotate someone up and you'll lose the, the four-man rotation. So I think just banning Lucio is an okay answer for Feliz, but if they have a, if they can snipe onto something, a Tychus. It's a safe ban, but it's not a strong ban. This is easily the Dahaka ban. No, nope. they leave the Dahaka. Interesting. So this is targeted towards OJ, removing the ETC, mm -hmm. removing the Muradin, which right. means that we're definitely going to see Dahaka for Feliz. Okay, definitely. We're not having, uh, of course, myself and uh, players not having the, on, not on the same page. I thought OJ was not at the best shape of form today, uh, with his lots of his skill shots. But seems like they want to go and destroy the front line, targeting that, targeting 
him so he can actually play worse in a way. Well, I know? think that even, yeah, I think that the idea is OJ seems to be a weak link in some ways with his aggressive plays from Muradin. Mm -hmm. But he's only picked Muradin too, so if you think he's a weak link, you can remove his comfort picks. Tyrael's already removed too, so not a hero he can play. He's played a lot in the past. Yep. So now he's sitting there thinking, well, which hero will I play? And Johanna is still available, obviously, but not very strong. There it is. <laughs> not very strong against the Genji so far, though. And they grab up the Li Ming. Are you, like, is... are you like controlling their <laughs> mouse or something today? I mean, I did predict, predict incorrectly that they would ban Dahaka instead of ETC. Dahaka should easily be the final pick here. But Johanna does, uh, can survive. Oh. A lot of the damage coming out also, say from the CC, with her iron skin, but... I mean, it, you, they've also removed Li Ming um, from Gluck from being picked, so that, uh, you know, they don't have that AP damage against the Johanna, the spell damage, um, because Johanna, obviously, her blinds are stronger against attack damage heroes. The question is, what will be the second DPS here? A strong wave clear hero, uh, I think, is desired. Tough to pick the Vala into the Johanna. This could be a, a map where we see... Nova? Not Nova. <laughs> I was going to say... Oh, Junkrat. Oh, Junkrat. I was not going to say Junkrat. I was going to say uh, Gul'dan, but... Yeah, Gul'dan's actually a pretty good... Uh, from all the way back, like, the Corruption can actually do so much damage here. It does scale well into the late game, which this map often goes to. It's going to be our first Junkrat of HTC Korea. Um, obviously, okay wave clear with the Junkrat, a lot of burst damage, but mm -hmm. has been considered to be a bit of a hit or miss uh, hero so far on the pro scene based on what we saw from Gold Club World Championship. I think it's still the same. It's either you make a super play or you just miss it. The tire, Rip Tire does not really do too much damage oftentimes, so you can't really make a crazy play out of that. But when you land on that mine and if you toss the other one into your side or something, that's the kind of crazy play we see in lanes. But other than that, we, it's really hard. I So this is for the four man. They've clearly like got a very strong four man. I... Uh, I was gonna say this can't like I was, I was thinking it wasn't gonna be Dahaka because Dahaka was the obvious choice, uh, and I was starting to wonder what they might pick instead. I mean, Samuro much weaker on this map than he is on. Mm -hmm. and we talked about Boe, and obviously we saw him earlier on Cursed Hollow. The Dahaka pick will struggle against Sonia, but if they can make something happen with the wave they have with Greymane and Johanna in the bot lane, then perhaps when Sonia has to rotate away to help control that bot shrine or the camp associated with it. That's when things could, that some plays can be made with the Haka in the top lane where he does that damage. But I'm not confident that against the Junkrat here, the Genji, with Garrosh as support uh, for them to be able to add those extra stuns and threaten big aggressive plays, that they'll ever, that Sony will ever need to leave the top lane. So the Haka pick, which was left for last, I feel, isn't going to round out the comp like they wanted it to. Also, Junkrat will be a great one to actually poke all the way in for it and to make all the room for Genji to just sweep in and take all the kills when there's so much poke coming out. Like, there's also burst from Sonya. Genji just has to go in and get the kill. Like, that's all he has to do. I think the stage is set for him to just wipe out everything. And Frankl, I think he just has to even maybe take Diamond Skin at 16 or something. Let's not get ahead of ourselves yeah, on the that's Diamond 16. Skin. That's 16. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I... I think there is some merit to Feliz's draft. It's not going to be very strong against Junkrat with the uh, the um, blinds. I almost said bans for some reason. The blinds, um, you know, not going to be as powerful as they would have liked it to be. As Relic is back on the Genji, already looking to overextend. Nice concussive mind, though. That's first blood to Dahaka. Liu finds himself in trouble as well. Already used his stun. Relic gets out. Rankle not able to secure that kill. Only Stamer is going to go to this quick bot wave clear. One of the things Greymane can do. Goes ahead and disengages out. A nice start with Junkrat's play like that. But that's... If that continues, that Gluck will, of course, take the lead. But Feliz has to be careful for those mines coming in all the time. So even though Aimer got that bot clear, Saron is doing the same up in top with the first blood onto Dahaka. Saw the rotation up with Frankel. Who wanted to put some threat onto that top lane, but it's unsuccessful. Knight. Relic showing his mechanical skill here yet again, as this will finally be cleared. This is an opportunity to take this camp, because they did have that earlier clear from Aimer. I really like how Felice is playing their wave clear and 
Uh, this one inch small advantage they had. Might even be able to parlay this into the neutral camp take, the neutral knight camp in bottom. Not going to be easy, but look at how they're threatening this wall that could allow them to rotate in. They're also controlling the, the Sun Shrine at half at the moment. Sonya is looking for some damage onto the Haka. Okay. Not going to be able to get this quick take. Mm -hmm. Shurikens will prevent it. Sonya does stop, uh, does take the top Sun Shrine at the same time. Another good Concussive Mind this time used defensively. So lots of CC if you're this position, if you're not, be careful of where you're positioning yourself as a police member. You will get pulled in or you will, you may get just get pulled in and die instantly. So I think that's also one thing that Greenman has to really be careful because in order to da do damage, he has to come in into wolf form. Yeah. But he will get tossed onto like all the way to the other side with Garrosh, with Junkrat. Okay, really good iron skin usage here actually coming out from OJ. He got his hero pool severely banned out in this game, but Showing us some good Johanna. They lose control of the Shrines. Hamer should be able to deny this, though. The problem is, I don't think they're going to take the Sun Shrine here. It's a bad matchup for the Dahaka. OJ, hyper-aggressive, looking for the Condemn. Meanwhile, the top lane totally controlled for Gluck. Peaceful moment. At the bottom, continues. Fights. So much sustainable damage here for Overlord every time he reloads his auto attacks here. It's really tough. Frankel has to hit lots of the skill shots in order to win that win this team win this match up, up, up on top. Of course, and the Hawkeye is losing the top alone. And every time the gank. every time Overlord gets his Qs back, he's able to do so much poking. Uh, and you know, obviously his wave clear is going to be really good in those moments. But Junkrat works really well in the four man here. And they even can, because of Relic's uh, hypermobile hero that he has, his Genji here, he can rotate top to threaten the Dahaka kill. If they get one kill in the top lane, it's all over. I like that Greymane is actually letting them kind of bully in the bottom lane for just a moment to actually get this cap. But will it cost them a death? That's the question. Mine here actually might have helped save Liu. That's true. Not over yet, though. Missing the Q here is Milky Way, so he will get out. Oh, report overload. Can they hold that bot Moon Shrine? I don't think so. I don't think this actually ends up being a Dragon Knight. OJ's in position to deny as well. Not gonna happen if here. They force rotate all the way to the mid lane. Maybe they can, but they're gonna lose the top anyway. Okay, so. Yeah, they lose top. That grab of the Knight Camp from Greymane was actually really smart. I liked how Aimer decided to play that. Actually buys them some time here. This is still a very close game. But it feels like Felice is always playing slightly on the back foot. I not, cannot die here. It will cost them a Dragon Knight. Uther with the stun here. Iron Skin comes through, but no picks. Oh, Aimer overextending. Very likely to die now. There you go. Blue Beetle gets the kill. Very aggressive support player tonight. Cost them the Shrines for just a moment, but I think that's all it's going to be. Blue Beetle should body block this. Frankel doesn't even send it out. Never mind. A close one, and there's a trap. But they don't have enough damage to kill Uther. This is a very slow game going in, just, just merry go around top and the bottom. But so far, I think Gluck has been pushing a little bit more into the walls. Yeah, like Gluck so is playing scratches. the slow, safe game. Because this is their very first match, they're tied up 2 2. Of course, this will be the last one. Oh. And so far, Gluck with. A few more kills that are leading in the XP, but for least they can also catch this up with so much CC. Once the Haka starts moving away from that top lane, I think there will be a lot more fights. I think they could have been actually looking for a few team fights at the bottom. If the Haka joined with some CC, I think they could have got some kills. Okay, Liu knocked oh, by that concussive mine. mine. The mines have been so good here for Overlord tonight. Always a player famous for playing new heroes first. Obviously, we saw KSP Black play a lot of. Junkrat in Gold Club World Championship, but in HCC Korea, he is technically the first, even though he's the first team playing. We'll get this hero in. Level 10 is up. It is going to be the Rip Tire, but all it took was that one kill, and not in one second too late on the contest of the Sun Shrine, and mid lane is going to be the stomping grounds here for Saron, who's taken over this Dragon Knight. Let's see, first Dragon Knight at six minutes at level 10, also Felice. Without level 10, they will be pushed out a little bit more. Luck can just 
push this mid and try to push the other, other lane as we have the lane changes, I think. This really forced the Dragon Knight to be alone and the other members to actually go around to one lane just push in. So the defending team has to push in to just making it harder for them to defend, you know? Imagine how terrible this would be for Feliz if actually Genji got the Dragon Knight and Sonya was in the top lane. It would be like, oh, oh my god, bad. But it's still like... You can see Relic is pushing the top lane hard. I mean, it's still a bad matchup for Dahaka there as long as Relic positions correctly. Dragonite expires here, looking for a pick on to Aimer. Ten is up here. Nearly forced out a Divine Shield. It was a close call. No heroics used, however. Frankel has got some incredible uh, wave of forces. Yeah, We're seeing really good accuracy on this. trying to hit the, hit the orb with that wave of force, but not successful this time. Saren barely avoids that tongue grab Cocktail? to get out. No Saren's positioning there as well. He was looking for an angle to get the Poison Spear to actually grab that kill, which would have happened uh, had it been an overextension from Aimer. Cocktail, I think, was on cooldown. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, that was a really cool position for Saren to, to look for the potential dodge on the Cocktail, but also to turn and get a pick. Saren's really impressed me today, to be honest. He's made a few mistakes in terms of overextensions in the top lane, but his mechanical skill on these solo laners has really helped his team get into these mechanical, or sorry, these uh, macro positions. Another good wave of force on the Relic. Has to be cleansed. Does get over the wall. Cyber agility. They're going to retreat away. Close call. I think that shield missed onto Genji. If uh, if Joanna came a second too, second, I think Joanna came a second too late for that, for that shield for the stun. And maybe they were looking for a kill onto Genji there. Yeah. Actually, see, might have been it was sorry, used too early or hit by the cleanse, but because uh, Hanaten actually went down a long time ago, Saren was just able to sit up here and do extra damage. I think he gets out too with Milky Way coming up. There's the mini stun, the toss, isolation even committed. That's a long cooldown here for a missed pick. While as meanwhile, Overlord is doing damage in the bot lane. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but in terms of this best of five specifically, Gluck has had the better rotations. They have been one step ahead in terms of map control. And part of that comes from the draft, obviously. But, you know, when you see these attempted ganks fail, whereas Overlord's getting free damage, now they're losing control of their own nightcap. Yeah, the these pressure. things start to stack up, yeah. Gluck has been doing that since the very beginning, set number one. Oh, if not if they actually get the kill here. He still pulled it off despite the wave of force for Frankel. Now he's going to turn this. Rectire comes out. Oh. Frankel does get the kill. It's actually really well done. The upgraded Ancient Spear, Frankel avoids it, but still it pulls him towards it, so it's going to be a one for one. That was a fantastic exchange between two great DPS players. The Wave of Force into the dodges there. That was pretty amazing to watch, but still I think the win goes to Gluck, who has better position to continue to invade this. All that Feliz can gain from this is Dahaka takes control of the top shrine. That's because Saren's in the bot lane getting a fort while they invade camps. One shrine alone is not enough to get a Dragon Knight. Riptire and also Fury, but still. Force the shield out from Uther. I think that's on a long cooldown. And they're losing it. So I think this is the this is the their chance to actually gank all the way up. Try to pick on some members. But they are being a little bit indecisive which way they want to force go in. Joanna's taking a long time to take the shrine back. Milky Way just headed around the edge here to prevent any potential takes, but Saren has already reclaimed the Sun Shrine. Got the big rotation up for Feliz. They take the safe path, mm -hmm. but this means Gluck has enough time to rotate away while still clearing this wave, getting closer to 16. This Tongue Grab needs to hit. Nope, not gonna happen. Speed boost coming in from Saren's Heroic. Gonna help him get through. Turns this around, Cleanse comes through. As we see, Saron is just trying to whirlwind his way to victory. Here comes the Rip Tire. And Stasis protects Hanaten, but it's not going to help Aimer. And now Hanaten is going to be the next to fall as the Dragon Blade swings through. Even though it may not be enough with all that damage, it gets tossed. Concussive Mine can come out in a second, too. And forces Shield out onto Johanna. You, basically, they lost two members and used everything for no good here. Yeah, no gain. Well, only pain. <laughs> Saying no Lots pain, no pain. gain doesn't work in reverse in this case. Well, no brain, no pain. Well, that's mean, Chico. <laughs> that was just an outplay by Gluck.
Don't be, don't be a toxic soul. No, I wasn't player. talking to them. I was, I was talking to them in a way, you know. Don't make me a mean, into a mean guy. I didn't mean to make one. you a mean guy, but Liu is being made into the mean guy. His team might be a little bit frustrated with his positioning there as the rotation comes through for Gluck. And now, you know, we're looking at easily a Dragon Knight. Relic goes ahead and channels this. We're going to see the Unleash from Saron again. It will be Sonya piloting the Dragon Knight. There you go. And Jacob, is there any way to recover from this? Overlord solo camping. Blue Beetle's going to come with his uh, Chain Lightning to come clear it up now. And can they save their keep? The bot push is going to be real. This looks like it may just be, uh, you know, a tough spot for, or an impossible spot for Feliz to come back I don't from. No, man. I think the like the only way is just just run run towards the other side and pull their land off. For I think that's like the only way of coming back. It seems very unlikely in game to come back from here, unless Frankel makes a crazy super play, like getting a kill on the Junkrat or something. Yeah, that's what's gonna have to happen, I think. Safe positioning behind the Dragonite. Using the Dragon Knight's Q to actually put out an AoE area to prevent everyone from doing poke damage on the other side of the wall. Frankel hitting all his skill shots. The Dragon Knight gets low. They might be able to save the keep. Yeah, Concussive Mine forces Iron Skin to be used now for OJ. It's expected to just look for the angle. The Hawkeye is soaking up from the other side. Just wait for 60. That's their chance. Sonya is on the Dragon Knight. All the damage is just focused onto the Dragon Knight. They look for damage onto Frankel. Frankel's position good enough to stay alive, they back away. Not going to chase, that's... I thought they had the, the best timing to actually keep Sonya on the Dragon Knight, and now Luzu came in, make the chase, the Aka coming in from the bush to grab onto Junkrat and look for the kill, but I guess they were a little bit too late there. Meanwhile, Dahaka is split pushing top lane, as you guys can see in our picture in picture, but... Newest technology. Yeah, not gonna be able to do, uh, too incredibly much here to look to do some Coming damage to the top in for a gank now. That's exactly yeah. the one. Oh, the Less missile shield. grab. Uba gets blown up. Dude, I mean, Frankel tonight. That we have seen some really incredible plays from some of these players tonight. I tell you what, Frankel. His Li Ming is definitely ban worthy. You have to say they did ban it on Towers of Doom. And it has been a force to be reckoned with. This time will eliminate Overlord. The second death for Junkrat this game, both to Frankel's accuracy there, threading the needle on those skill shots, despite the cleanse coming through after the Blessed Shield. So they got the kill, they got the cleanse as well, only for one Blessed Shield. And that's exactly what they needed to come back into this game. They're making the rotation work. Maybe one more party bush with one more kill basically will get them back into this game. They're moving in slowly and Gluck knows the this. The Dragon Knight Do they know it? I think they might suspect it. Feliz is just trying to kind of leapfrog their way forward to a party bush and kind of a, uh, a little invade there, but not going to be enough. Now just going to clear this, use this night camp to perhaps get that fort. Two forts still available, you'd say. I mean, all three are up, but like two, they're reasonably available for them to take the mid and top forts to catch up to 20, but I don't think that's going to happen before Gluck hits their level 20, hits the Storm Tier talent advantage. Okay, Milky Way does uh, cleanse himself here as he checked for one second. We'll get out. It's also one of the cool things about Heroes of the Storm. Now we're missing lots of cleanse, of course, not as... It's very, still very important, but a lot of the tanks having that unstoppable yeah. on themselves. Even Blaze does have unstoppable with the talent at yeah. level one, so. Huge opportunity for a rip tire here if they wanted to commit in. They lose the cap. Saren wants to get them 20, though. That's the commitment here. Sonya in the top lane helps protect the fort as well to guarantee their storm talent advantage. 20 just around the corner here. There it is. Just need to be careful. Feliz won the last game off of a sudden team fight win because Relic's mispositioning. And again, they're trying to punish that. Garrosh, but that's not the target you want to grab onto. You can't really get the kill, even with all the members focusing on the damage. Maybe a rotation off to Sonya with all the members. That could have been worth it. But they're too late. Not really focused on that moment. They have 20. As you can see here. And they have a two level advantage so kind of eight percent scaling here cannonball being taken for junk rat dragon becomes me when has that ever not been taken 
uh, at 20 for Genji. Dragon right. becomes the and they just and easy invade here with 20. And also Dragon Knight. Yep. When you have that advantage like that with a 20 and you have the invade a potential, like Feliz, I think what they should have done was to commit to one lane bottom or top. They're going to lose the keep either way if you do that, but now they don't have 20 and they have to defend a Dragon Knight that's going to push to win with full health here. Storm Talents against them regardless. Will be at least two keeps or just all the way into the core. I mean, with these Siege Giants, to come, back, come back in. Yeah, with these Siege Giants, I think they actually go core here. Frankel is way out of the fight now. This could be an opportunity to commit in. Core under attack here, trying to get those shields off. OJ's the target. Iron Skin's here. Frankel hitting the Dragon Knight only, which means everyone else is very high on health. Relic really actually escapes that shield. Nicely done at the time. Okay, Junkrat's Riptire comes, comes through. Ooh, the core is under attack with the Dragon Knight. Storm Shield. Dragon Blade. Dragon becomes a Frankel is the target. Dragon Knight's Inspiration knocks him away, but doesn't get the kill. But this is too much damage here. And Gluck is going to take game number one. OJ. Tosses out the semicolon there, the stressed out pause at the end as well. And that is going to be the win here for Gluck. Very coordinated Dragonite push there. Unfortunately for uh, Frankl, he just couldn't do the damage he wanted in that team fight because he was zoned out by kicks. Aimer was kicked to the left, so he was far away as well on the wrong side of the gate. Also, go Aimer was hooked so much from Junkrat, even even in the, right in the middle of the fight. So exactly Zunkrat, Junkrat doing all the poking. They couldn't really, they didn't really have a stand a chance against level 20 with all the pokes coming in and also Dragon Knight kicking all the damage into the back line. Liming should have been in the, uh, on the, at, in the side always doing the damage, but when you're kicked away from the team fight, you can't really do much there. Yeah, when you're under pressure coming out from Relic as well, Franco's just really struggling to find a way to, uh, to get into a position to do maximum damage. Even if he's hitting the Dragon Knight, he's not doing enough damage to the members um, on the side of Gluck there. So just like uh, HTC Korea tradition ever since Super League in 2015, mm -hmm. uh, we are going to have an interview with our MVP. But the thing is, are we going to hear that those trumpets? No trumpets. No trumpets. No trumpets. I'm, I'm, I'm sad. sorry. I'm, I'm Totally a Bible Club right now. Trumpets were the OG way. We're at VSL now. Oh, yeah. We might have some exciting new music, you know. Yeah. At some point, perhaps. So the Korean commentator is going to take the MVP over to our interview chair. Mm -hmm. We had never had that before. We got an interview chair. Who's your MVP for the day, Wolf? You know, that's a really tough question. Mm -hmm. Like, I... I Relic actually, was honestly, perfect, I want to say... You know? I want to say Blue Beetle or Saren, to yes. be honest. Like... Mine's Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle sure. played really well in all five games. Mm -hmm. uh, I had some amazing plays on games three and four. Um, Saren played pretty well. I feel like he had a few mistakes here and there, but his mastery of the top lane mm -hmm. and like the heroes that he drafted for himself were um, what ended up leading them to victory in a lot, in a lot of those macro games. Relic was really good at invading uh, as well, but he had so many mistakes that I feel like I can't call him the uh i can't call him the mvp he is the shot caller yeah. and the drafter for the team but in terms of positional mistakes there were too many for me to personally give him the mvp award of course here's, here's the result you guys all know it but if we go into the heroes of the storm mvp system i think blue beetle will get it because he basically uh died the least i think also made some super plays others uh made lots of mistakes and we could see that from the front line and the side but blue beetle he was Keeping them alive all the time. I think he deserves an MVP tonight. Yeah, I would agree. Um, we very rarely get supports in Korea yeah. chosen as MVP yeah, for some the reason. Very like first time. Even if you look back at like MVPs chosen in like Overwatch, League of Legends, it's like always Koreans choose DPSs or like junglers or tanks, but never the support never gets picked. Junglers. I want, I want Blue Beetle to be this be the MVP. I don't know if our opinion goes in. But it doesn't. Let's see. But maybe they're listening to us. That's what I want to hear. Blue Beetle, please. <laughs> Move. I get the feeling they're going to pick Relic for some reason because mm. he had a few flashy plays. and Maybe even Overlord. Overlord. Uh, seems like we are... Uh, what, what did he say? I, did, I didn't catch that laugh. <laughs> I, we I got something in our ears, but yeah. I didn't actually hear what it was. But uh, looks like they're still setting up for the interview. I'm going to have uh, some highlights, guys, before we jump into it. Aha. So we can talk over these for you guys and relive this series. This was the late Cocoon, I remember, that caused 
Glock to actually struggle in this team yeah, fight. So let's watch back. the highlight and decide on who's on MVP. See, Overlord actually doing some crazy plays going in all the way. Look at that Grey main play. Yeah, the uh, go for the throat, incredible there. Overlord definitely had some good plays as Lee Ming as well. Not as good as Frankl's, but still a standout performance we saw. Here's, of course, our Cursed Hollow uh, highlights. We're only in the first game of five. Nice cocoon. Milky Way really had the right cocoon at the perfect time. Yeah. Milky Way has set up this fight. Like, Relic looks like a god here, but only because Milky Way hit those stuns. Their draft, their comp was so good for this map. Okay, we're headed into Towers of Doom now. We're going to look at Milky Way again, setting up this three-man oh, wash. This wash hit, basically. After the sea fight was over, look at that sound barrier. I mean, the sound barrier right was like, it hit everybody, but I don't even think they needed it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, let's break it down and let's play, man. It was basically Blue Beetle ha having fun there. Okay, so some of the plays I think that Blue Beetle made aren't going to get highlighted here because they were super technical, like interrupting mm -hmm. uh, stuns or saving his teammates. He ends up dying in this fight, so we're going to watch uh, a play from Feliz. Okay, this is the solo isolation kill onto Saren in the top lane. One of the reasons why he might not be named MVP. Does shield himself, but it's not going to be enough. There's the second grab to kill him. Everyone remembers this. Now, this was a play, oh. a mistake by Feliz, where they went into Divine Shield on boss pick with, with also the uh, Tormented Souls available. 4v5, as you mentioned as yeah, well. Yeah, Sonya like, was not there the entire time. It's going to be a bad situation if they let boss go, but it was a horrible situation after losing half their team and the boss. Beginning of BOE, game number four, where Garrosh was actually making lots of great tosses. All right, watch to Frankel. Side. Watch Frankel's skill shots connect here. Looking for the pick on the Saron first. Into the back line. Ancestral goes off. Right after the sound barrier. And watch Frankel. Q, W, everything Kills. goes in. Knocks him in with the Wave of Force, knocks him to that hole, and Frankel is just popping off. Wave of Force is left and right. Perfect CC for Li Ming to do all that damage. I final. mean, with how well his Wave of Forces were placed, like, what are you supposed to do in those yeah, moments? All right, we're going to jump into our interview with our MVP. Let's meet with the very first winner of HC Korea. Well, Kono on the left, by the way, for those who are fans of the player, he's now a commentator on the Korean scene with Go Prime. They're right next to all the people from the venue. It's one of the great honor to introduce one of them. 차세대 TDL이라고 불리는 <웃음> 자 우리 선수를 만나보도록 하겠습니다. 아 네. 어, 네. 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 많이 이기면은 이 인터뷰를 하러 자주 올 거잖아요. Still, uh, if you win a lot, you're gonna be here all the time. 네, 네. 네 일단 오늘 경기를 하시면서 그 유리한 경기에서 so don't be nervous, 좀 okay. 팀이 많이 당하는 경우가 좀 있었어요. 네, 네. And even if, 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 when, even if when you're winning, there were lots of times when you were forced back and you made lots of situations for yourself to actually make the game turn around for the other team, I think. I think we're just trying to have the conversation continue, not really trying to take the atmosphere change into when, when we were losing. So I think those kind of talks really favored us into winning today. Let's talk about Sky Temple. Do you think uh, when you queued into the camp alone, was that a misclick or? <laughs> Whenever I just to just tossed that Aldrin, I sometimes just I had that like pressure or like a duty call that I just had to press that Q once more. So I, that was my mistake there. Of course, are you going to be one of the best TV players after a season? Yes, of course, I will play even better later on. Do you want to say anything to the audience tonight? I made some mistakes. It's not going to happen anymore. And I want to be the best on Tyrio.
네. 자, 라고 예, 지금 미크이 선수가 얘기해 줬는데요. 이런 패기와 함께 2018년 HGC와 함께 신나게 달려봐 주시면 고맙겠습니다. 자, 이제 이어지는 경기는 뭐죠? And I think that's going to be it. I, let's, I think we're going to close right here, right after. Yep. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching our first series. Our second series of the night is coming up just after this. It's going to be KSV against Tempest. We'll see you then.